Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our Joint Commission EOC Compliance and Work Orders webinar today. We're really excited to show this solution to you and, you know, hope you'll learn something new and interesting in this webinar and, you know, take it, take it back with you. So to get started, I'll do a couple introductions, then I'll go into how the webinar is going to be run, and then we'll get into straight into some demos. First of all, my name is James Restivo. I'm a VP of Operations here at Cocaine Software. Co-organizer with me is Rick Anderson, a, a president of Agilis Incorporated. He'll be demoing his solution as well, on, and we'll be uh, uh, showing that. Uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of overview, I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, what Corcanon is, I'll give you a little introduction, then I'll pass it over to Rick to give an introduction on Agilis. He'll talk about his, uh, his mobile solution, and then I'll pass it back over to me so I can give you a rundown of the work order solution. So Corcanon software has been around for 20 years. We specialize in automating business processes for businesses across the, the world and you know, the United States and Canada. We've, we have a few different things. We have some out-of-the-box applications, uh, Nitro Studio, and we also do some custom solutions. A lot of our development is on the Office 365 and SharePoint platform, but for the purposes of this EOC compliance, this is a SaaS solution that we're going to be talking about today. Here are some of the applications that our Canyon uh, offers as well, some of the other options you have if you want to talk to us about any of these. But mainly, I, I wanted to pass the time over to, to Rick at uh, Agilis to talk about his, uh, what, he, what he does with Joint Commission Compliance, how that helps hospitals and healthcare organizations, and then he can jump into a demo of his, of his app. So without further ado, here is Rick. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking the time out to look at this. I'm Rick Anderson, and I'm with Agilis. Agilis is a company that focuses on Joint Commission Compliance for the hospitals uh, across the country. We have a decade's worth of experience with successful accreditation surveys. And when I think of a hospital, the hospitals practice what we call modern medicine. And what we do is we, we say we practice modern compliance. Most hospitals today, when they're dealing with compliance and tracking the data, they're using binders. And what we do is our focus is on digital inspection reporting. Agilis actually is Latin for agility. Uh, so we practice what we call also agile compliance solutions. What we're talking about here is I wanted to talk about the state of environment of care rounding. Joint commission requirements stated in EC 040103 and 040105. As you can see here, they talk about the hospital using the results of data analysis to identify opportunities and also for the hospital to take action on those opportunities that they've identified. Typically, what's happening right now is you have paper-based checklists, and the checklists are usually partitioned by discipline, whether that's infection control, safety, life safety, hazardous waste, medical equipment, so on and so forth, or you have a single checklist, which is paper-based, that would encompass all disciplines. So you'll have either teams of people that go out and doing these rounds, again, uh, with these paper checklists, or you have a single checklist where maybe one individual is going out and, and trying to identify opportunities. What this leads to, that is manual data entry. You know, once all that's done, they fill everything out, and then you have to create reports manually. It leads to uh, longer report lead times uh, because after those checklists are put on somebody's desk, you know, I mean, they could be entered in that day, a week, months. Um, you know, it just it is not an efficient way to, to track all of this data. Another thing that you'll see is there are disparate software applications throughout the hospitals. You know, there, there's companies out there that just do environment and care rounds or you know, they have a separate work order system. And typically these, these work order systems, there's no, or in the round system, there's no handshaking between the applications. And that requires also then manual manipulation, either to export or import the data. And what happens there also is it, it's not real time. I'm just bringing up the uh, actual mobile app so that I can show that here. 
Now, what we've looked for is a, an integrated reporting solution, something that was open architecture, customizable, scalable, and also something that would give us real-time data capture from a mobile app and then also lead to custom reporting. And that's why it was so important and timely that we partnered with Crow Canyon. They had a work order system that we were able to marry our application to to automatically send this data to. So for the hospital personnel that actually do these rounds, they can go up into their departments, out on the campuses, wherever they are, do the rounds, submit the data through this, this EOC rounding app, and then it goes right into the work order system automatically where they then can identify all the issues, assign anything that was identified to the appropriate teams, whether it be carpentry, electrical, plumbing, you know, so on and so forth, and really manage that data. So it really becomes a fully integrated solution as it relates to capturing all this data while on your environment of care rounding. The mobile system, so actually our mobile inspection data acquisition system, we call it MIDAS. It's available on iOS and also Android platforms. The apps themselves, we do have the EOC rounds. We also do equipment inspections as well. But for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to talk about the rounding app. And you can see also here it's role-based access. We have the ease of data entry. All the forms are totally customizable. And you can see them right here. What I'll do right now is I'll just open up one of the apps themselves. So this is actually a rounding app that was customized for an individual facility. If you have different questions or different areas that you need customized or, or different ways you look at things, the app is flexible enough to be able to, to handle that. So that you can have a drop down for all your departments to identify when you're doing your rounds. You can There's a drop down here that says next to across from stairwell by, uh, you put the room. We actually have a drop down here of all the issues that can be customized. There's a free text comment box where you can put in, you know, label chemicals, expired medication, or, or whatever, uh, whatever comment you have in there. And then here is where we'll actually assign it to a particular area. Again, any of this can be customized uh, to your facility. Additionally, now we're in the life safety uh, app itself, there are life safety specific questions that are entered into this app. So in addition to the actual issues that you would identify, there's many questions that are standard that are asked while on the, the round so that you can actually track that and uh, determine trending, let's say for life safety or whatever discipline you know, that you're rounding on. So just to, to show an example of that as well, now I can also, I also have infection control. Again, the app here is similar with the department. You have the findings uh, section, but then just to illustrate, this is, this is strictly infection control findings. So again, you can see here I can do pass, fail, or maybe it doesn't apply. And then the questions that you're looking at here are just for infection control. So this would also follow with, Again, you know, we have infection control, life safety, hazardous waste, medical equipment, you name it. So any of the disciplines, then the app can be customized to to track that data. So what I'm going to do here right before I pass it over to James is I'll just enter in a couple of, I don't know, life safety rounds issues. I'll say next to room and then, you know, we'll have James show this. We'll just pick an issue here, a clean ceiling vent. I'll put in here clean. And and then we'll make that environmental services. And what's nice about this too, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, it says add new one, then that will just hold that. I can say add new one and then just say create another one. So I don't have to open up the app and go back to it. This will automatically then just capture this data. I'll just enter another room here and another issue. Clean exhaust fan, clean fan. I don't know, we'll make that HVAC. Okay, I'll say done. There's two issues, and then all I do is I hit submit, and that now should be in the work order system where we can actually look at everything and track the identified issues. 
So as you can see, we what we've done is we've created a again a, a mobile application where it literally takes the place of all of your paper-based checklists. It's either on uh, iOS or on Android, so you're you're in real time up on your floors in your hospital facility and submitting all the data and the data is automatically entered into a work order system where you can manage that, manage any of the issues and then get your reporting as far as trending, you know, what's left and so on and so forth. So with that, I'm going to hand this back to James and he'll go through the actual work order system. All right. Thanks for that, Rick. That's good. Overview of what's going on with the system, uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the, the work order system that we've developed as a SaaS solution here. So the first screen you're going to see is the, the portal interface. So this is a portal interface for uh, with, with limited amount of information for people to take a look at uh, the, the information. So it's really just for end users or people who are going out on the rounds, working the data. They want to see the tickets that have been submitted. They want to see, you know, they want to be able to go in and update those those work orders quickly, and they want to be able to manage them. One thing I'll show you is that this is also mobile responsive. So if we squeeze the screen down to a mobile interface, you'll see that it does respond to the size of the browser window. So users could actually come in here and look at the solution from their mobile browser interface, and they don't have to leave the, their mobile phone or go into a desktop solution. They can do it all from, from their mobile device. When we go look at the work orders, you'll see that there are work orders that are assigned to the logged in user. So this way, the person who's logged in on their phone will know what work orders were assigned to them. They'll have options for editing the work orders, they'll have options for viewing the work orders, and there's a number of things that they can do from those from those interfaces. So if we edit the work order, there's a number of fields in here that, that they can change. So if they wanted to change you know, where it's located, they want to change, add some work log details, they can track that information and that will be attached to the work order. And I'll show the back end side of it, kind of the administrator side of things, and you'll see that this work log appears in both places, so you can kind of see where where things are. You can also uh, go through and update the status. If you wanted to close it, resolve it, and, and complete that work order, you could do it through this browser, you know, the mobile interface as well. The other thing is if you come over to the display form, one of the neat things here is that you can auto assign, you know, or reassign the ticket, reassign the work order from this button right here. So we go reassign work order. It brings up an interface for you to say, okay, you know what, I, this is really belongs to another department or to another person. I'm going to go ahead and assign this over to, to Rick. He'll now get that notification. Uh, we can set notifications to go out uh, on myriad different processes throughout the life cycle of that work order. But this is going to notify Rick that a assignment has come through and there's a work order and now he knows to go and look for that and complete the work order. So it really closes the loop between what Rick was showing with the mobile interface of bringing, you know, they go out, they find the issues, they report the issues. And now what we're doing is showing that there's a, this completes that cycle. So not only was it submitted, people were, not only were people notified about it, but now there's responsibility and accountability for actually completing that, that process and completing that work order. So from there, I'm going to jump into the back end, kind of the, the what we call the, the technician or, or you know, facility side of things, where it's a little more of an administrator interface, kind of the overarching, you know, people can come in and take a look at the, the, the different metrics about the system, different metrics about the work orders, different metrics, uh, and, and this is also where you'll find the reporting piece of it. So then what we'll do is look at the different list views. So out of the box, we have a few different list views where you can see what the, you can see different aspects of the system. If we wanted to show all the work orders for a particular department, we can do a quick drop down, click that department, and now what it'll do is show all the work orders specific to that. Let's say we want to show all work orders specific to a requester. We could do that as well, just uh, simply un, filter that and go and filter the uh, requester. And let me go ahead, a little bit, give me a little bit of trouble here. There we go. Okay, so now we can do that. And we can also filter on multiple criteria. So if you wanted to filter on requester and then see, okay, they show me all 
issue submitted by this requester for this practice area. Now you can see, or this discipline, now you can see all the, the tickets or the work orders that were submitted for that requester and for that discipline. So there's a lot of different sorting capabilities where you can really piece through and work through the system and see what, where's your, where are these work orders? What's their status? What, what's the, what's the, where are they in the process? Who's responsible for them? Who submitted them? The other thing is if you, you know, you can't find what you're looking for by filtering it or by sorting it, you can also use the search feature. So we have an option to go and search all work orders. And if you want to show all work orders where the, you know, assigned staff person is, uh, I'm just going to do this as the administrator. Now you can see all work orders that are assigned to the administrator. And if you wanted to add some criteria to it, show me all work orders that are of a request status of closed and assigned to the administrator. You can do that as well. I'm not expecting any results because I don't think we have any in this demo site and that's the expected result. We can also go back to not started and now you see that those work orders. And from here you can click in and same as on the portal side, you can add, edit, you can assign to someone. There's a lot of different features right in this backend that you can work with too. So that's really to help your managers and facilities managers manage the day-to-day -day process of these work orders being fulfilled and completed. Now, once you've done all that, once you've you know gone through the work orders, you've completed them, you see where they are in the status, you see how many are assigned to particular people. What you want to do is get some reporting out of this. So one of the other benefits of our work order solution is the report center. So from this report center, you have an interface to create a report. But we've also created a few out of the box reports here uh, just as, as some examples. Let's say you want to see all the deficiencies by, by discipline. This is going to show you a graph of all the deficiencies by that discipline across the whole list of work orders that are out there. You could further drill down into this just by simply clicking on that bar. Now you get that whole list of work orders. You see 254 is what you're looking for. And that is the number that we see here on the, the chart as well. So you can directly get that information by going to the report itself. The other piece of this is not only do you get this information in a graphical interface, you could also do it in a tabular interface. But on top of that, you have a lot of flexibility, as you see up at the top, to share this information. So we could schedule the report, and that's going to send it as an email to someone on a scheduled basis. Say every week, you want the facilities manager to know how many work orders are still open. We can create that report and put it on a schedule. If you wanted to save it as a PDF, if you wanted to save it as an Excel, if you wanted to print it out or email it, you can, on an ad hoc basis, you can do that as well. And the other side, other piece here is that you can filter it by day, by week, by certain time frame. Right now we're looking at the created date and we can show all work orders that were created yesterday. You're going to get a different view. It's limited just to what is sent in the yesterday. What was sent in last month? Let's take a look at that. You got that information now right there in front of you. And if you wanted to just call it back, bring it back to all of them, you hit no filter. There you go. There's all the information, quick, easy, accessible. Just get it right there right at your fingertips right in front of you. Now, a lot of this is, a lot of what we're looking at here is driven by what we call Nitro Studio. And so this is a, a SharePoint tool that we've developed at Crow Canyon that we're leveraging, uh, you know, Azure really is leveraging here to provide this full scope compliance solution for hospitals. And one of, the, one of the great things about it, just to touch on this real quick, one of the great things about it is how easy it is to configure different aspects of it and configure different forms. And so we can even go in and create different forms and different different pieces of it. Uh, but really before I get into that, before I get into some of these other things, I notice we have a couple of questions coming up. And, and one of the questions I'm seeing here is, do I need to install anything? Well, the answer to that is you don't really need to install anything other than the app on the mobile device. This is all cloud-based software as a service, that with, with the SaaS solution, SaaS solution, where users can log in, they can see this data, they can access the data, and it's all, you know, all cloud-based. Uh, so the only thing that needs to be installed is a, a mobile app on the user's device. Let's see, we got another question here about inspection data. That's a good one. Okay, so 
can we host ex inspection data? Uh, and the answer is yes. So, so a lot of times, uh, in, in I'm kind of getting familiar with this world of compliance myself. So this is all kind of new to me. Rick's really the expert in it. But one of the things he showed me is this need for having inspection data as a SharePoint list. And the benefit here is that we can easily get that, grab that information from Rick's mobile app. And we can put it into a list here in the work order solution. And what you're seeing here is a inspection, a list of fire door inspection reports for the 2019. And similar to the work orders, what you can do is see which ones are passed, which ones are failed, which ones are still opened, what the work, you know, you can have a work log, you can have a whole bunch of other information on here, you can have a barcode related to it. But what you can see is that here's all my inspection data. And this is not, can be applied to not only fire doors. We've been, we did fire doors as part of this demo, but really this could be applied to any number of things, exit signs, you know, fire extinguishers, um, any number of, of equipment that is critical for life safety inspections. That information can be captured in here. We can report on it just as we reported off of those work order solutions. We can report off of this data uh, in this list as well. And there's no restriction in doing that. No additional costs either. And then, so it really gives you a full scope of, of compliance capabilities uh, for those inspections and that equipment. And we have another question here about handling equipment inventory. So yeah, I know I didn't I didn't touch on the equipment piece of it. So let me go go into that real quick so we can we can talk about it. And one thing that Rick pointed out to me is that there's another compliance, uh, another you know, joint commission. A snippet uh, ec.01.01.01 slash ep3 <laughs> kind of a crazy name but that's what it is it's um it gives you a way to track all your equipment directly in the system so this can come as part of the work order solution that we're providing here and you'll see on the equipment there's a number of things you can track now we've we've add some dummy things in here but here here's a fire extinguisher and you know there's all sorts of information you can capture here about that piece of equipment and really, the, to meet the compliance requirements as per that, that uh, joint commission uh, requirement, you, you want to see all the related manuals. You want to see all the related warranties. You want to see all the related, you can even tie it back to the work orders, all the related contracts. All that's in here. All that can be tracked. All that can be presented. Easy to use, accessible interface. It, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So before uh, I got into the, these questions here, I was, I was starting to talk about the forms piece of it. And one thing that, that we've done that, that Rick showed me that he did actually going through, he didn't have to come to us. He did this on his own. And this is this makes it easy for other users to do the same thing. You want to create a key request form. So we have a forms designer tool as part of Nitro Studio. It's also in our portal over here. I'm just going to switch back to that real quick. And I'll show you that we have this key request form. So this is a form that Rick developed. It's kind of you know, designed for a mobile interface at the moment. So if I scrunch this down, it'll kind of look a little better. Let me just do that real quick. You scrunch down there. He put in this agreement information, all the fields that need to be captured, all the, it was drag and drop, easy to use interface for creating this form. This is just one example of what you can do with this. So if you want to create other forms, track other information, track other requests, easily put in here, easily accessible. You can create workflows. We have a whole workflow piece of it. I won't get into that. I won't bore you with the details, but if you want to learn more, certainly reach out, let us know. But yeah, there's a whole whole workflow piece of it to send out auto notifications, auto assignment and tracking. And again, the reporting tool that, that's in there, that's part of this as well. So you can track that, create those reports based on these other forms that you create as, as needed. So that I think is pretty much the overall, you know, uh, overview of the system kind of gives you a good, you know, get your feet wet with it, kind of shows you what, what it's all about. Uh, certainly, if you want to learn more, we're happy to have a conversation about what this means for your compliance, what this means for your uh, inspections, what this means for your work orders. It really just gives you a full scope of compliance from end to end, from what Rick is doing on his side with his mobile app to the compliance sites that he offers aside from this and then uh, tying into this whole work order uh, solution. Well, thank you for joining. I appreciate everyone attending and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day, everyone.